Hi, today we're going to be pocket milling. And we're going to pocket mill by coordinates. And that means that we're going to be calculating coordinate positions for important parts of our pocket. That means the corners. And we're going to be getting our final dimensions by going to those coordinates. So let's take a look at our pocket. We have a rectangular pocket, as I've said, that's 105 millimeters by 20 millimeters, and it incorporates four corners that have a radius of 5 millimeters. And that's going to be easy to get, because if we use a 10 millimeter diameter tool, well, it'll give us that 5 millimeter radius for our corners. Now, this pocket is part of a project. It's the bottom pocket of a precision vise. Now, we're not going to be doing the whole project, just the pocket, as a demonstration of coordinate pocket milling. But I'm going to incorporate into this demonstration a few things that come from the fact that it's part of another project. And one of those things is that this pocket on its bottom has a second groove that's 10 millimeters wide. We're going to use that to be able to pre-drill some holes that are going to help us with the milling of this pocket. Another thing that's important to note is that the original reference on the drawing is somewhere down here. But coordinate milling from a reference that's not equal to all sides of the pocket that you want to produce is a little more difficult. Because obviously, if my reference is down here, each corner is going to have a different coordinate. To make things a little simpler, I usually move my reference from the corner that it was originally to the center of the pocket that I want to mill. If the center of the pocket is 0, 0, well obviously each corner is going to have the exact same coordinate. The only thing that's going to change are the signs plus or minus. That simplifies everything enormously because obviously when you're shooting for coordinates, if each corner has different numbers, well, it's easy to get confused. And since I'm not that bright and that I easily get confused, I found that the simplest way for me is always the best way. So we're going to be using a 10 millimeter tool to get the proper corner radius. But 10 millimeter tools don't take a lot of material off quite quickly. They're actually pretty delicate tools. So we are going to rough out the pocket using a larger diameter tool. So we're going to be calculating coordinates for a larger tool and calculating the coordinates for our smaller 10 millimeter tool. Our larger tool here is going to be a three quarter of an inch diameter two flute end mill. Why three quarters? Because the project is metric. Well, three quarters of an inch is very close to 19 millimeters. And when I rough out here, I'm going to want to leave a little bit of material all around my pocket for finishing. Well, that three quarter of an inch tool is going to leave me about a half millimeter on each side here. And that'll do just fine. So let's take a look at those coordinates for roughing with the 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeter tool. Now, 3 quarters of an inch actually works out to 19.05 millimeters. But 0 0.05 millimeters just really isn't important. And it's not going to impact what we're doing here because it's just a roughing cut. So we're going to call it 19 millimeters. So let's take a look at those coordinates. I've drawn a dotted line here showing the contour of my roughing cut. I've drawn it because I wanted to make it quite clear that I do not want to touch my finished surfaces with this 19 millimeter tool. So we're going to leave about a half a millimeter on each side and I also want to leave half a millimeter on each end. And for that we'll calculate our positions for our end coordinates of this milling cut as follows. B, because I'm calling the coordinates for my roughing pass coordinates B, so B is going to be equal to 
105, which is the full length of my pocket, minus one diameter of tool. Why one diameter? Well, because I have one half diameter on this end, and I have one half diameter on that end. If I bring those together, they're equal to one diameter. So 105 minus one tool diameter minus, and this is important not to forget, one millimeter. Why one millimeter? Well, I want a half millimeter on each end. If I do just that, the top part, I don't divide it by two, it will give me the position, the distance between these two points. But what I want to know here really is the distance from the center of the pocket to one of the points. And it will be the same coordinate for the other side. And that's why I do 105 minus 19 minus 1 for this. And then I divide it by 2 to get that. So 105 minus 19 minus 1 divided by 2 is going to give me 42.5 millimeters. And that means that between the center of the pocket and the center position of my B coordinate for my 19 millimeter tool, I have 42.5 millimeters. So my XY coordinate is going to be B equals 42.5 and 0 in Y. Y doesn't change because it's all happening on the Y center line. And that means that if I start from the center of the pocket and go to 42.50 and then come back to 42.50, well, I'll have roughed out that pocket. But I won't be doing it in one pass. I'm going to take five passes of about one millimeter in depth because I want this pocket to end up five millimeters deep. So we know where we're going for our roughing pass. So let's take a look at our coordinates for our 10 millimeter tool that will give us our finished pocket. So I'll take a minute, erase this, fix things up, and I'll get right back to you. So here we go. I've cleaned things up and we have our four corner radiuses and their centers indicated with the letter A. And a good thing that we're milling here and not drilling, because if we were drilling, I'd have four A-holes. Uh, but regardless, our four corners we want to find so that we can go to those coordinates with our milling cutter, our 10 millimeter cutter, and get the finished dimensions on this pocket. The calculations are quite similar to the ones that we produced for our rough passes. And for that, let's take a look here. Choose any corner, doesn't make any difference. A, A for X, because we're going to have to calculate X and we're going to have to calculate Y, because the center in Y on these four corners isn't on the zero center of the part. So I'm going to have to calculate both. So I have A for the X coordinate will give me 105 minus 10. Why 10? because I have 5 millimeter radius on one end, 5 millimeter radius on the other. If I add the two together, it gives me one 10 millimeter diameter. So 105 minus 10 divided by 2. Why? Because I want from the center 2A in X and not from A to A. So 105 minus 10 divided by 2 will give me 47.5 millimeters in X. And that's what I have here. A equals 45.7 millimeters. Now let's take a look at Y. A for Y is 20 millimeters, which is the height of my pocket, or the width. At minus 10, I'll, again, 2 half diameters, so minus 10 divided by 2, because I want from the center to each coordinate. So 20 minus 10 divided by 2 equals 5 millimeters. And that's what I have here. My A coordinates is 47.5 in X, 5 in Y. And if I go to those four coordinates with a 10 millimeter diameter cutting tool, well, I'll have milled out my pocket to its final dimension. There is one thing that I want to mention. It's important. And I don't think it's something that we've spoken about up till now. And that is tolerances. Now, this 
pocket milling operation has a tolerance and I'm not paying much attention to it because it's just a demonstration of how to approach such uh, an operation. But in reality everything has tolerances. Now we're used to working on outside dimensions because when we start in this trade that's generally what we start with. And outside dimensions when you're shooting for them you're aiming for the top end of the tolerance. That means that if you have a part that's one inch in dimension and it has a tolerance of five thousandths of an inch, well you really should be aiming for one inch five thousandths. That way if you make a slight mistake the chances are that you'll still be within the tolerance range of plus or minus five. So somewhere between one inch five thousandths and four hundred and ninety five thousandths of an inch. However, if you're working on an inside dimension, it's the opposite. You should be shooting for the smallest possible dimension with tolerance. And that means that if you're working on the inside on a pocket, let's say, that's one inch wide, that has a five thousandths of an inch tolerance, well you should be shooting for four hundred and ninety five thousandths of an inch. And again, if you do that and make a slight mistake, well you still have a good chance of being within your tolerance because that pocket would be good right up to one inch five thousandths of an inch. So external you're shooting for the top end of the tolerance and internal you're gunning for the lower end of the tolerance. Another thing that's good to mention here that's different from what we're used to doing at the start of our careers well that is that pocket milling creates a pocket. A place where the chips can accumulate. So when pocket milling you're going to want to use a strong jet of coolant to empty out the chips as they're being made. If they stay in the pocket the tool is just going to remash them and it's going to affect your finish and obviously your tool life. So use a strong jet to cool down the tool but in this case also to get rid of those chips. Another thing that's worth mentioning when pocket milling is that if you use a roughing tool that has a larger radius than your finishing tool you're going to end up with a big difference in your corners as we can see right here. Now my 19 millimeter or three quarter of an inch roughing tool has a quite large radius whereas the 10 millimeter one has one that's much smaller. So even if I've calculated my final coordinates for my A positions at 47.5 and 5, I'm probably going to make one pass before my final pass with the 10 millimeter tool to come and eat out some of the material that I've left over in that corner since the two tools had a different radius. That is going to even out my tooth load as I'm coming around for my final pass because obviously if I cut all along my edge with a half millimeter tooth load on my tool and all of a sudden I hit the corner and end up with a four or five millimeter thickness of cut, the flexion is going to change and my accuracy will suffer. So even though my 10 millimeter tool is a finishing tool, I'm going to be doing one roughing pass with it just to eat out those corners. So we're really looking here at three different milling operations. One major roughing operation with our 19 millimeter or three quarter of an inch tool. One secondary roughing operation just to eat out the corners with our 10 millimeter finishing tool and a final finishing operation with that same 10 millimeter tool. So we're almost ready to go so let's get over to the mill and start our work. Okay so my installation is done as far as the rough part is concerned. My part is installed and my vise is aligned. I've found the edges of my part. I've positioned myself above the center of the pocket that I'm producing and I've set my digital readout to zero zero in the X and Y axis. But before roughing the pocket with my three quarter of an inch tool, I will pre-drill 
a series of clearance holes. A series of 9 millimeter holes that are going to go right through the part. Now, I can do that because the pocket that I'm producing has on the bottom a second groove of 10 millimeters wide on the full length of the pocket that I'm producing. So there's a groove in the bottom of this pocket. A groove that goes clear through the part, top to bottom. If I pre-drill my holes at 9 millimeters, they won't interfere with my 10 millimeter groove. And those two holes will give me two big advantages. First advantage is it gives somewhere for the liquid coolant to go. And that helps me to see what I'm doing. So if the liquid can go through the part down by gravity, that's very practical. The second advantage has to do with the cutting tool because we're going to be using a two flute three quarter of an inch cutting tool and those two flute cutting tools can cut while plunging but they don't cut very well and that's due to the fact that even if the tool is turning at a certain RPM its center really has a motion of zero it's not really moving. That's why that if I have pre-drilled holes, well the center of the tool when it plunges into the part won't be meeting any material and that'll really reduce the problems inherent to plunging a two fluid end mill into a part such as tool deflection. I will however be very careful not to drill the holes on the full length of the pocket even though the bottom groove goes end to end. And that's caused by the fact that the bottom groove on one of the ends undercuts a vertical surface on the other side of this part by about 5 millimeters. So obviously if I pre-drilled these 9 millimeter holes on the full length of this pocket, well I'd be getting myself into trouble and my part well wouldn't be any good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a series of holes but I'm going to restrict my end holes to the coordinates that I used for my three quarter of an inch end mill and that'll keep those nine millimeter holes well away from the end of the part and everything will work out just fine. It's important that you don't work all willy-nilly. You want to remember where the coordinates of these holes are since we're going to be drilling all the holes once with our center drill and then coming back with a 9 millimeter drill. So I've already set the center of the groove to 0, 0 and I know that my end coordinates are going to be 42 millimeters and 0 in the Y. So I'm going to cut evenly spaced holes starting at 0 then 10.5 millimeters, then 21 millimeters, then 31.5 millimeters, and finally my end coordinate at 42. And I'm going to do this on both sides of the center of my pocket, which is zero. And that way I don't have to remember all the coordinates. All I have to remember is that from zero, they're all spaced at 10.5 millimeter increments. I've installed my three quarter of an inch end mill, and I've been careful not to move my part because if I don't move it, my coordinates stay good. I've set my speed to about 360 revolutions, or I should say revolution per minute, and I've set my feed to 3 inches per minute. So I'm ready to start cutting in a back and forth cutting motion in the x-axis. Uh, I'm ready to cut my roughing groove at 3 quarters of an inch. Now this pocket is going to be 5 millimeters deep so I'm going to take 5 passes of 1 millimeter and that'll give me the depth I want. There you go, I've done the roughing out with the three quarter end mill. So I've changed my end mill and since I'm not going to be plunging, I'm using a four flute end mill. 
I've maintained my RPM around 360. Now that's much too slow for this size of an end mill, but since I know that I'm going to be milling a pocket and that I'm going to be milling towards inside corners, and when you do that, you always have to be wary of collisions. So reducing the RPM permits me to reduce the feed. And a reduced feed permits me to approach the corner more delicately, and that reduces the chance of collisions. We'll be able to speed things up when we get a little more proficient. And finally, I've set my Z0 on the top of the part. Right now we have corners that don't have the proper radius and that are going to require a lot of material removal. What I want to do here is leave about one half millimeter all around the pocket for my final pass. So this first operation is going to be to come and finish those corners. And for that I'm going to move over above the existing pocket where there's no material and then feed down in Z five millimeters so that I'm just flush with the bottom bottom of the pocket. We have to remember here that our first pass with our uh, finishing tool, well it's really a roughing pass because we're leaving a half a millimeter all around the pocket. So I'm shooting here for 47 millimeters and 4.5 millimeters. My final pass with this tool will be done at 47.5 in the X and 5 millimeters in the Y for each of the four corners. For these final passes, I'm going to be approaching the corners with manual feed because I'm going to have to change directions rapidly. And obviously, since I'm very close to the finished surface, I don't want to get confused and move in the wrong direction. Now let's get to it. So pocket milling really isn't that difficult, but you have to stay concentrated and focused on what you're doing. Remember your coordinates, write them down, position them in a way that you can see them, even if both hands are busy turning hand wheels. Remember, machining should be fun, but it has to be safe. So have fun, but be safe. And to everyone, happy machining.